So with that, we got plenty of time, about 50 minutes, a little under 50 minutes. And I think there'll be a great amount of time to continue doing what we've been doing with the generative AI, using it as a basically virtual tutor. And I do think it's a wonderful way to use this new fangled tool in a way that helps you learn, not, you know, help you bypass the learning, help you cut corners in a way that, you know, doesn't actually teach you anything, which can be the case of some of the other resources like a check or I don't know, is it called a course hero? Those websites, I don't think uh, and many people actually learn from them because, you know, they provide exactly the thing that I've refused to provide that I could you know, written solutions. I, I, in fact, it makes takes me more time to make these videos than to simply provide a written solution. And the reason I haven't provided a written solution is that because I think written solutions are so uh, subject to abuse that I don't think uh, a lot of people will be using them to learn. But with the generative AI, there is an exciting possibility of interaction where, um, the kind of the questions you ask and the kind of the response you get can be really specific to what you are working on, like having a tutor in real time. And um, this is a, in one sense in which I think a generative AI will be even better than my homework help videos, because my homework help videos, it shows you what I've done correctly. So if you are already trying to work through a question and you think you did it right, but system tells you it's wrong, then um, like, unless you can kind of figure it out yourself through watching homework helper video and other resources, then the videos don't react to, they don't respond to your question, you know, what did I do wrong? For that, you need someone or something that can um, reply to you, interact with you. And you could always send me Canvas message. I love to answer those questions but I, I'm not going to be responding in real time. <laughs> That's where ChatGPT will respond in real time and be really great. So uh, let me use my normal, um, the, not normal, <laughs> my usual uh, prompt that kind of conditions ChatGPT into helping me learn and not giving me answers right away. So I'll say, Hi, uh, I'm working on my electromagnetism homework again. Um, we are in magnetostatics now. Uh, can you please help me again? Um, uh, like uh, before, I really want to make sure that I learn the material because I need to prepare for the oral exam with my professor where uh, they will be asking, my pronoun is he, but you know, in general it's they, <laughs> where they will be asking, um, <laughs> asking uh, these uh, questions and ask me to work them out, work the problems out um, myself without any help. I mean, I do provide some help, but let's just say without any help. Um, uh, please don't give me the full solution right away, but help me with uh, each step I'm stuck on. Something like that, um, and I'll, um, and I'm sure it'll uh, acknowledge. So uh, we got lots of time, 45 minutes. Um, so that's probably enough time to do like four or five questions. So let's uh, look through. Um, we got 10 questions. Um, let's see. Let's uh, find the questions that are um, substantial. Yeah, so this is the kind of question, it depends on how you do it. If you're doing it like the way Hint says, um, it actually drives, your textbook drives the formula for the magnetic field of a current law. So, um, so let me try this. Um, so you could look up the formula and do it. And, you know, in the one-on-one uh, -on -one meeting, uh, you can use the textbook. So as long as you know where in the textbook to look up, which you can see from hint, you know, what section, uh, then, you know, you can use the formula that's derived in the textbook. 
but with uh, for the purpose of this session, let me just ask a chat GPT. Um, I'll say so. I got this question, and let me see what it does. I, I want to see if it will walk me through using Biosabarchula to drive it, or uh, yeah, it'll give me the formula. Um, yeah, and and the formula that's fine. Um, I, I guess if you are using that. So let me bring up a calculator. I'll just keep everything in basic SI units. Then um, then units should magically work out. <laughs> I do recommend an exercise kind of going through units. But um, yeah, so this is a kind of a simple question because if you are simply using these formulas or pi times 10 to the power of minus, oops, uh, power of, uh, Four times pi times one times ten to the power of minus seven. That's mu naught times the current. Oh wait, wait, wait! I'm uh, jumped the gun. Um, that question is for the radius r. Try to arrange the formula for r. Okay, so let me do that. Okay, uh, there's a, a little bit of a step to do. It's not that simple as just plugging in numbers into the formula, but Pretty simple. I mean, it's a simple algebra to solve this for R. So in the interest of time, I'll do it in my head. R is equal to it takes a bit of time to do it in my head. And basically swapping R and B and you can kind of um, Think through the proper procedure. Multiply through the thing by r over b. That that would be the procedure you are going through. So with that expression handy, now I can plug things into calculator. Um, so it'll be mu naught, still the same thing, um, times ten to the power of minus seven uh, times the current uh, eight point five ampere, uh, keeping everything in basic SI units. Divide by two, divide by the three times ten to the power of minus four tesla basic SI units. So when you do that, you get radius in basic SI units. So 0 0.0178 meter um, converted to centimeter. So times hundred, that should be one point seven eight. So one point seven eight centimeter. So that's it. Pretty simple. And I'll say I got it. Um, I got it. Thank you. And I wonder, um, so after it responds, I could ask. Um, so, you know, this time I just uh, looked at the formula. Um, so for uh, this time, I just uh, looked up the formula. Um, but if I wanted to drive it from scratch, what would I do? I wonder how well it can walk you through using Biosavart's law. Uh, here's how you can yeah, set up Biosavart's law due to a small current at a point. Yeah, that's the expression. Uh, and for this class, I also uh, give you the alternate form where we continue to use Coulomb's constant and speed of light. Um, you know, apply Bios of our law for current to law. The DL is at the same distance R. That makes some things a lot simpler, yeah. Center of the loop, that's perpendicular, yeah. So, that, uh, that, oh, no, no, that, that is right, yeah. Cross product gives you vector back. Although, no, that's not quite right. Um, so it's, a, it's a not quite right in the sense that when you do this cross product, the resulting product uh, won't be in the same direction as DL. So you gotta do the right hand rule to figure out. So in the center of the loop, it's gonna be you know perpendicular to the area of the loop. So um, this particular expression isn't quite right, but when you are dealing with a magnitudes, it doesn't end up mattering. So slight bit of a mistake, one of factor answer. Um, yeah, and then integrate around the loop. Yeah, and I guess this will be the step. The only thing that I do say is kind of missing here, and it's a limitation of ChatGPT as it is right now, where it can't generate correct um, 
technical diagrams. Um, so, you know, so if you say, I'm having trouble visualizing step two, can you draw me a figure? It's the one question that I know it won't be able to answer correctly. Because it, it has Im image generation capability, but the image it generates will be more artistic than technically correct. So. Um, so, you know, don't ask it to draw your figure unless you care about accuracy, like this is absolute garbage. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, these are good steps, mostly, again, with the minor errors here, but that's fine. It doesn't affect the final thing. All right, let's uh, find the question where it's not a matter of simply looking up a formula. Um, I have a feeling it's probably going to be hard to find. Uh, this is a matter of applying pure suburbs law, and it can actually be good. Um, so I might come back to that. Or actually, I guess I got enough questions. So let me do this. Let's do this one. So I think if I, so I'll again play the role of the uh, damsel in distress. Or I don't know. I don't know what the male version of that word is. Someone who's lost and just uh, not sure what to do. Um, I got this question next. Um, uh, is there a formula? And the answer should be no, or the formula here is Biosavart's law. And the way you would get it is um, that this is a really tiny segment of the wire. So you basically approximate that as infinitesimal and use Biosavart's law. Yeah. Yes, there's a formula. Sure. Yeah. Version of Bio Savart's law. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, this would be the formula, and it's a matter of. Um, so, um, I ask this question because my professor is sure to ask me to explain. Where does the formula db equal to mu naught i dl sine theta, that's the entire numerator, divided by 4 pi r squared come from? And it'll say it comes from Bio Savart's law, work out the cross product, get you the magnitude for theta, Bio um, Savart's law, yes. Um, yeah, that's the vector version of it. And when you do the cross product with our head, that's where, and you know, that might, um, that this should help you figure out what the theta is, you know, angle between DL and R head. Did it uh, explain that up there? Um, where theta is the angle between wire segment to DL and the line connecting the segment to the point. Yeah, that's probably right. Let me draw it uh, just to be sure. So, um, so for point A, um, that should be pretty simple. Like, so this is my DL. So the angle there is 90 degrees for the, um, A. So good. Um, so sine of theta just gives me one. Um, now for B, yeah, I think that is the right direction for R. Right? So the actual angle is this. This is theta B. But sine uh, being what it is, um, you know, so over. 90 degrees, the like the, it's kind of symmetric around the 90 degree line. So if you use this acute angle as theta b, your answer will still be right. Whether you use this obtuse angle or this acute angle, same answer. Um, so yeah, I think uh, with that, um, I can just plug in the numbers. Um, uh, I'm trying to see um, if there's a possible way to I don't know any the mistakes I'm thinking of making don't seem plausible to me um, you know like uh, ignoring maybe the metric prefixes that would be one you know uh, one thing I could imagine doing um, let's say for three centimeters I do it correctly so I would be doing um, DB is equal to uh, you know so just work it out. So mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the minus uh, 7 mu naught 
times the current 7 ampere times dl so 0 0.4 millimeter which will be 0 0.4 times 10 to the power of minus 3 meters and then sine theta is 1 divided by 4 divided by pi divided by r squared so 3 centimeters so 3 times 10 to the power of minus 2 squared that should give me correct answer 3.11 times 10 to the power of minus 7 3.11 e minus 7 tesla let's make sure that's correct and then the mistake that I can imagine making is um, for B, uh, using wrong value for R squared. Maybe I, instead of 3 centimeter, I use 4 centimeter, when I really should be using 5 centimeter for this distance here. Um, so let's uh, give that a try and just ask ChatGPT, hey, what did I do wrong? Um, so, did I, did I still have, yeah, I still have calculus. Um, so, uh, let's see, uh, I gotta just type everything in again from scratch. So, oh, actually I don't have theta B either. Uh, I gotta work that out. So let's just uh, make the mistake. So I'm gonna do um, uh, 4 times pi times uh, 10 to the power of minus 7 times current 7 ampere times the segment 0 0.4 times 10 to the power of minus 3 and then for sine theta I'll mistakenly think say it's 1 again and then this time divide by 4 divide by pi divide by now for r use 4 centimeter so 0 0.04 squared and I get that ooh can I yeah 1.75 times 10 to the 1.75 times 10 to the power of minus 7 and it'll be wrong and let me ask ChatGPT hey what did I do wrong what can I do and I have a feeling that it won't quite figure out what I did wrong you know it's a, it is hard to figure out exactly what wrong number did someone plug in um, but it'll probably then walk me through uh, figuring the angle and all that uh, so let's do this all right, uh, I got A, but it says what I did for B is wrong. What did I do wrong? Can you figure out? Let's see. Using that, yeah. Using that, distance R. Straight line, yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be five centimeters here. Uh, it's you know one of those uh, Pythagorean triples, three, four, five, and you know, is it twelve, thirteen, and something else? I <laughs> five. Uh, I got some of the, three, four, five. I definitely have memorized. The other ones maybe not. Uh, ah, angle theta, and yeah, yeah, angle between DL and the wire segment from. G point B is different than from point A. Yeah, point B, it should be... Yeah, so, um, I mean, from this you can kind of check. Um, so, sine theta, uh, theta being that, or that same angle as this, so it should be 3 divided by 5. Oh, so 0 0.8, that's wrong. Pretty sure. Yeah, that should be 0 0.6. So, I mean, let me plug it in. It'll probably say it's wrong, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Um, so, uh, I mean, I plug in 4 pi times 10 to the power of minus 7. So what I'm interested in seeing is, can ChatGPT correct its own mistake? In the past, it's been able to. And let's see what it does. 7 times 0 0.0004 times 0 0.8. I believe this should be 0 0.6. Divide by 4 pi 0 0.05 squared. So I have 8.96 times 10 to the power of minus 8. And I'm pretty sure that's incorrect. Yeah. Uh, and let's see. Uh, 
um, it says it's wrong. And you know, tutors are not always right. Sometimes tutors give you a wrong answer, but once they know it's wrong, then they usually can, uh, good tutors can kind of rework through, spot their mistake, and figure out what they did wrong. Um, wait, what? Okay, this is... Uh, okay, it, it's just getting goofier. Um, yeah, that's not inspiring confidence. Numerator. Is that the numerator? Pretty sure that's not even the numerator. Um, four times pi times one e seven minus times 7 times 0 0.0004 times 0 0.8 yeah that's not even the correct number all right it's it's getting a uh, goofy so um, um, so let me just give it up here um, um, it's still wrong um, uh, let, let me see what it does uh, with that can you correct yourself? Possibly not. So you got the angle theta b wrong. I'm pretty sure it's labeled this as theta b. And I wonder if it's able to work its way out of that. It's possible that it can't. Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, sometimes tutors can't help. <laughs> so, yeah. It's just what you might think. It might be worth double checking the questions requirement. Uh, adjusting, formatting, um, it doesn't work. Are you sure sine theta b is equal to 0 0.8? Maybe it'll figure it out. Um, horizontal distance is 4, vertical is 3. Uh, but I, did I get it wrong? Um, no, 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 I think it, it's getting it right. Um, so theta b is that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it yeah, yeah. So it, it, the, the relative values are same, right? So I'm pretty sure um, that that is actually right. Yeah. So um, yeah, a little bit of nudge, it, it gets it. <laughs> it. Takes a bit of time. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I do think that this interactivity can be helpful. If for no other thing, it might help you remember, you know, some of the considerations that go in. Um, so, yep, thank you. So, yeah, yeah it's a, uh, it, it, so, I, ideally, you know, it would never be wrong, but even when it's wrong, like, uh, it can, sometimes it corrects itself just from the knowledge that it's what answer was wrong, and here, I didn't really have to give a lot of a nudge. I just, you know, questioned one little thing, and it did work it out correctly uh, from that notch. So, all right, 20 minutes or so. Let's see what more we can do. Uh, there are probably two or so good questions. Let's skip some questions. I've done first to two. Uh, this probably boring. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, uh, this uses in the formula. Um, uh, this can be good, multi-step. Uh, I might come back to that. Let's first to see. Um, yeah, this is an Ampere's Law question. Um, maybe this is better. Let's see. Yeah, this again is kind of, once you have the solenoid formula, then it's kind of easy. Um, wait, can, do I remember the solenoid formula? I think it's a, um, I, I have a lots of formulas memorized. I think a magnetic field of solenoids is mu naught i n, 
where n is the number of winding per unit length, like this would actually be n. So with that, I do mu is one of the few constants that I have memorized because it's you know literally just four pi times the uh, power of ten that makes the stuff come out right. Four pi times ten to the minus seven um, times the current seven point four times the number of windings two nine zero zero. Um, so that's in Tesla. So in milli Tesla, it should be two six. 27.0. Yeah. Uh, okay. Easy question. Once you have the right formula, then you just plug in the numbers and you're done. <laughs> uh, as, as I keep saying, those are the easy questions. Uh, so let's see. Question eight. Yeah. It's kind of similar. Um, yeah. It's just solving the questions. Maybe. This also is a. So you could treat it like application of Ampere's law question, but you can also um, your textbook drives the toroid field. <laughs> I also drive it in the lecture, so you can just look it up and use it. Uh, it's uh, kind of easy that way. And does it uh, go? Yeah, yeah. And I think these values are specifically chosen so that you are not either with a shorter distance than the inner radius or a larger distance than the outer radius. The formulas we drive are for within the toroid volume. So, um, so let me go back to the questions I skipped. And I think this might be a good question to do. Um, so let's see. I think I can get it in two screenshots. So this. And the next one. And how do I? Um, so let me play dumb and pretend that I don't know Ampere's law. And I'll just say, um, I don't think there's nearly enough information in this question to calculate magnetic field B and then to calculate into point um, the closed loop integral of B dot DL. Um, how do I approach? This question. So it doesn't say, yeah, it doesn't even say infinite solenoid. So, like, I can't even assume that it's an infinite solenoid. <laughs> uh, yeah, indeed, challenging. It's actually not challenging. Once you're using Ampere's law, it's super easy. Yeah, you can approach using Ampere's law, yeah, which uh, evaluate this without needing to know exact value of BF here or anywhere, right? in fact. All you need to do is current and closed. So, yeah. Yeah, path is given, A, B, C, D, represent closed loops. Yeah, determines value step by step. Uh, part A, path A, okay. And close the, uh, no, that's wrong. It's somehow not seeing these. Uh, so B, A is gonna be wrong, but let me type it in anyway. And you know, as you are reading it, I think uh, as a thinking human being, you do realize, oh yeah, that's not right. Let me, you know, think through it. Realize enclosing one, two, three currents of I. So, you know, answer based on that. That's what you should do. Uh, but let's imagine that you didn't do that and just enter the zero. Path to be one. Oh, but path to be actually does enclose no current because not for the reason. It says empty space with no current carrying wires inside, but it's got current carrying wires, it's just that they cancel each other out. So it's carrying no net current. So B will be right, but for the wrong reasons. <laughs> um, see, see, enclose multiple current carrying wires, okay. Encloses all the wires in the central section shown, which contribute total current of N times I, yeah, N. Can you not count N? Um, I mean, I could enter n i mu not n i, and that'll be wrong. You will get syntax error for one because n is not one of your declared variables. 
let's uh, the, the let's say only a subset. Yeah, sure. Um, two. It might be having trouble actually counting it. Um, oh, you might need to count a specific number of turns inside C and D from the diagram. The values N and M are not okay. Okay, so let's uh, just follow that and say, okay, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so seven. And actually, there's a sign that you gotta work out. And here, I think it'll be positive. So we'll get C right. And for D, we'll count also. And we'll actually get the sign wrong here. So if I just say 2 mu naught i, that'll be wrong. It has to be minus 2 mu naught i. Because it's about the relative sign. So in the, the, the Ampere's loop goes, um, goes uh, counterclockwise. So wait, counterclockwise, yeah counterclockwise so the the kind of the sense of the surface um, normal that's uh, associated with it is com pointing out of a screen and um, if the current is going in the same direction pointing out of the screen then it's positive but the current is going into the screen so it should be negative so when I submit this I'll only get one out of four right wait what did I oh yeah sorry yeah because this was right for the wrong reasons. Um, so let's uh, paste this in and ask. Um, so I missed A and D. I missed, or we'll say we missed <laughs> A and D. And for D, I think uh, I counted the number of turns right, uh, two turns. Uh, why is it wrong? Um, I'm pasting the figure again to see if you can help me. And we'll paste in this figure again. I wonder if um, it's possible that ChatGPT cannot um, figure out the, the sign rule for the Ampere's law. So it's a geometric reasoning, and ChatGPT has never been all that good with the geometric reasoning. Um, oh, this figure description is incomplete. I gotta file a uh, errata for this because I'm pretty sure this figure description it comes from the. Opens text description, and they have to say for each path if they are clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, yeah, let me just double check to make sure that uh, the the insufficiency of that figure is indeed coming from um, Opens text text. And if it is, I'll file errata right after this session. Um, sources magnetic field. And it'll be one of the problems. Yeah. So it's got. Uh, I can't read it here. Let me just uh, paste it into Notepad. Oops. Um, there's. Yeah, it, they have to say if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Yeah, I'll definitely uh, file this errata so that they fix the figure description. Because someone who's blind cannot see these figures and are relying on that alt text. They won't be able to answer this correctly. Um, yeah, so I'm not doing that. So A, um, path is outside the coil. It's wrong. Um, and you know, you can see that it encloses 3. So you might say uh, 3 mu not i, just from seeing that it encloses 3. Um, no include. As the includes two turns of coil, matching marked is wrong, suggest. So yeah, direction of current matters. Well, uh, not that. Um, not the, but maybe, you know, where it says, uh, once you figure out, oh, direction matters, then maybe you can figure out, oh, it's a sign error. And just reverse the sign. I mean, here's one thing about sign errors, you know, it, this is a joke, a physics joke about, um, 
I guess uh, someone doing PhD thesis gave a presentation, um, um, and then uh, at the end of the presentation, the student, the, the, the PhD candidate has a sign error, and then so he, he's nervous and says, "Oh, I think I might have made a sign error," and one of the committee members say, "Or an odd number of them," um, or uh, I guess the other joke is a good physicist is the one who only makes even number of sign errors. Because it's the kind of thing, it's almost like multiple choice, true or false. You know, you make a mistake and you, um, if a positive answer was wrong and you are pretty sure the magnitude is right, then must be the negative answer that's uh, correct. And uh, with the things involving sign errors, sometimes what's more important is first getting the correct answer that matches your intuition, that matches whatever, and um, explain it in full detail later. Like, sometimes correct answer is more important first, and then being able to explain it in detailed steps, that's also important, but not as important as, you know, making sure you correct your sign errors, or at least making sure that you had an even number of sign errors. So, all right, uh, I got some help, and these were the right answers. Yeah, and ChatGPT will struggle with this geometric reasoning. It's uh, just something it does. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's explaining it greatly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, it. I do think of ChatGPT as a like a very smart um, blind tutor, it, because it. Um, well, I mean, it can actually uh, in, interpret figures, but as you've seen with this question, sometimes it just misses it. I'm not sure why, and it definitely cannot draw anything. So ChatGPT can help you explain what someone would be drawing, but it just can't draw anything itself, and it's not with any kind of accuracy. So let's look at the other question that I skipped that I thought might be good. I think it's this one, kind of multi-part question. And yeah, we haven't done any um, uh, questions involving uh, magnetic field generated by current and magnetic force on a, a current carrying wire. So I think this is probably a good one to end on. So we'll start with that. Um, So here you can also basically look up the formula. There's the formula derived for infinitely long uh, current carrying wire. Uh, you can use it. I, I do want, um, but my ideal vision is for every one of you to be able to derive it yourself using Ampere's law. But a lot of the homework questions aren't written that way. So if you are just looking up um, formulas, then that's fine. Uh, Thank you uh, with this question. Um, where do I start? <laughs> it's giving you formula for magnetic force per unit length, which I guess does exist. Um, let me see if that formula is in the textbook. If it is, then great, you can use it. Just make sure you cite it. Uh, if it's not in the textbook, then you should be asking ChatGPT to help you derive it because you can't just uh, uh, refer to... Uh, yeah, there it is, yeah. So, you know, so if you are using it, make sure you cite equation 12.11 from the textbook. And it's fine. Uh, I, I mean, uh, you know, it might make me slightly sad, but uh, you, you you are allowed to use what's in the textbook just to make sure you properly cite it when you use it. <laughs> so yeah, this formula is fine. Um, identify the values. Yeah, force per meter, you just plug in the numbers. Yeah, do that, get that. Direction of the force. Uh, yeah, so that is a correct answer, but um, so let's uh, first start by getting A right, because uh, that's a simple matter of plugging in those numbers. So we'll do that, 4 times pi times 10 to the power of minus 7 times 60 ampere for the one generating the magnetic field, and then 60 ampere again for the one feeling the magnetic field. 
divided by 2 pi uh, distance. Uh, yeah, 0 0.8. So, yeah, that's in basic SI units, basic SI unit. So, uh, I guess I can enter it as 0 0.00257. Um, so, I'll say I got a right. Um, no, opposite directions, the magnitude will be the same. Yeah, so. We'll use that. So let's do it this way. Um, so I'll say, okay, I got the magnitude right. Okay, I got the magnitude right, but I'm confused about the directions. I thought likes repelled. So uh, shouldn't the force be repulsive? when the wire currents current are going in the same direction. You know, reasonable, maybe. You know, likes repel and, you know, opposites attract. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Does it explain? Yeah, each wire creates magnetic around itself and it... Oh, yeah. So it's just giving you a rule, uh, which I guess you could memorize. Um, um, oh, so this sounds like one new set of rules to remember. Uh, is there more fundamental reason why a uh, two parallel currents? attract each other. I'm hoping it will give me an answer based on right-hand rule. That is the fundamental rule. So uh, using one of the versions of the right-hand rule, you should figure out the direction of magnetic field. And with the magnetic field, you should figure out the direction of magnetic force. So yeah, yeah, right-hand rule around the wire. If you point your right thumb in the direction of current, let's say going from left to right, then finger current the direction of magnetic field around the wire, right? So if I have current here and another current here, then in the location of that other wire, I have magnetic field that's pointing down. So, uh, this field, the circles wire one, Inside the field, each moving charge experiences magnetic force. So now applying the magnetic force, yeah, that's a given by that. So you have the, at this location, field pointing down, then you do uh, I cross, um, okay, uh, uh, so it, it was left to right, so left to right, so I cross, wait, I'm, oh. <laughs> Flipping it. I is this. So I, I should be left to, uh, so left to right, uh, left to right. I cross B and the thumb goes in this direction, which is where the uh, other wire was. Yeah. So, so yeah, if, if you follow this, it is kind of, you know, a lot of it. So you, it helps to like draw figures. I, that's what I would recommend. This is really one limitation of ChatGPT where you can't ask it to draw. So here, I guess the most uh, instructive view is the one from like end of the wire. So this is one of the wires. This is the other wire, one and two. So you have current that's going into the screen. Then you do um, the fingers curl in the direction that's clockwise. So magnetic fields are going in this direction. So here. This is the direction of the magnetic field at the location there. So you do current, current cross magnetic field that's to the left. So the magnetic force is in this direction. That's attractive. Yeah. So, so yeah, that, that, that's uh, probably enough of uh, trying to understand. Um, you know, once you master the right hand rule, you can figure out a lot of stuff without um, memorizing stuff. So.
think I got it. So I think that's probably it for this session. Um, I, I know I have a few minutes left, but I want to go file that errata about that figure. So let me give myself a little bit of time to do that. So um, so let me end the session here, uh, and um, and I'll see you next week.